Well, good morning, everyone, and it's lovely to be with you today. It's the first Sunday of Advent. This is a special time for us as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus and to pray for his coming again in glory. We reflect this now in our opening prayer. Dear Lord, as Advent begins, we prepare for your coming. We prepare not only for the birth of a baby, but for the arrival of a king. Fill us with hope and joy. Amen. And now our opening song, a favourite here at Walsall Church. So I want to hear you all singing along at home. It's a song which celebrates all those who have come before to point the way to the coming of Jesus. So let's sing together our opening song, These Are the Days of Elijah. Well done everyone, that was fantastic. 
And as it's the beginning of Advent, I'm going to light the first candle on our Advent wreath. Perhaps if you have a candle at home, you could light that too. We are thinking of the coming of Jesus, the light of the world. Lord Jesus, light of light, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. In the talk later, we will hear that when Jesus returns, he will come as king, but also as judge. We need to prepare ourselves for this by confessing our sins to him and receiving his forgiveness. Let's come before him now in penitence. We will have a few moments to reflect on the things we want to bring before him, and then if you would join in the words in heavy time. So now our prayer of confession. Patient God, when in the heat of the moment we have spoken words we now regret, forgive us. When in the business of our day we fail to see that someone is waiting for a word from us, forgive us. When we miss the opportunity to speak out against injustice and hatred, forgive us. When apathy and indifference close our eyes to those struggling in wilderness places, forgive us. Forgive us and fill us with your compassion and energy to speak your word of love and hope to a world in need. For now is the time. Amen. And when we confess our sins and truly mean our words, God is waiting to bring us forgiveness and healing. So let's hear these words of comfort now. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are now going to hear today's readings, after which Bishop Mark Davis will bring us his Advent message. So Josh is going to read to us from Isaiah, and then we're going to watch the Gospel reading. Good morning everyone, it's uh, great to be with you again. Our reading uh, this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 64 verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and caused the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf. Like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened 
and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. From Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who is to come, grace, light, and peace be with you. Dear sisters and brothers, I love the season of Advent. It's one of my favourite in the church's year. Those lovely Advent hymns and songs, our beautiful liturgies and prayers, those very familiar and much loved Advent traditions and customs, all so very, very beautiful. But we also recognise that this year our Advent journey will feel quite different in ways that we can't yet know. And yet, despite that, I also know that the call of Advent, the hope of Advent, the opportunity of Advent and the gift of Advent remains constant and true. It's a call to wait, to hope, to look, to listen. This is a season of joyful anticipation as we look for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one for whom we long, the one whose coming is at hand, the one who will never disappoint us. We remember, of course, that the word itself, Advent, comes simply from the Latin for coming. Jesus is the one who is coming, the one for whom we long in our Advent journey. And on that journey, we have lots of companions to encourage us and inspire us in the patriarchs and prophets, in St. John the Baptist, in the Blessed Virgin Mary. We rejoice also in our companionship one with another, in our prayer with and for each other. All of this will fill our Advent journey and bring us joyful hope and Christ-filled anticipation. There's lots and lots of different things that we could spend time reflecting on about Advent, its call and its challenge, its opportunity. But just let me reflect very briefly on three particular things that I've always found helpful in my own Advent journey. And to think, first of all, about the ways in which Jesus will come as judge. Sunday by Sunday in our creed, we profess our faith that Jesus will come to judge the living and the dead. Jesus will come again. He will gather up all things. He will come to judge the living and the dead. 
And so in our Advent journey, we have the opportunity to reflect on that image of Christ as judge. Jesus who comes to judge the living and the dead. But also to reflect on what that means for me and for you personally. To think of those ways in which in our lives we know ourselves to be in a place that isn't good. We know those ways in which we have separated ourselves from God and from others. And Advent gives us an opportunity to reflect on that truth and that reality and also to do something about it. To hear the message of John the Baptizer, to repent and to prepare in our hearts a dwelling place for Christ by our repentance, by our turning away from sin. For Jesus comes as a loving and merciful judge. He longs for us to know the joy of sin forgiven. He longs for us to know healing and reconciliation. He longs for us to know the peace that he alone can bring, the forgiveness that he alone can offer. And so an Advent journey that gives us an opportunity to take seriously all of this and in our prayer to come home, to come home to God who knows us and loves us. Also an opportunity to think of the ways in which each day Jesus comes to us in our families and friends, in scripture and in sacrament, in our prayer and in our worship. How we can see him present in the sick and the lonely and the sad. But never to lose sight of the truth that we find Christ also in those who will feel themselves and know themselves to be the least. Those who feel themselves the last and the lost. And to look very carefully and to see Christ present in them. And so an opportunity in these Advent days each day to stop and to think perhaps towards the end of the day. About where we have seen Jesus that day. Where we have heard his voice. Where we've seen his love. And be prepared to be surprised because we'll find him in all kinds of surprising ways. Yes, we love and worship and serve and adore a God of surprises. But we also serve and love and adore a God of disguise. Jesus is a master of it. And he'll come to us in some unexpected ways. So be ready. And finally, we know that Jesus will come to us in the wonder and joy of our Christmas celebration. And again, not knowing yet what that will look like. But knowing that the joy that his birth will bring will indeed fill our hearts and our lives. The Jesus who from the wood of the cross and from the wood of the crib proclaims for all creation the love and the mercy of God. And so let these days of Advent be days that are filled with joyful prayer, with deep longing, with a commitment to look and to listen for all the ways in which Jesus comes to us. For come he will, that's his promise. And he who is the truth speaks only words of truth. Jesus is coming. And we can trust that promise. So perhaps as we pray this Advent, under those three headings that I've spoken about, we might think first of all about the ways in which we will take our repentance into our prayer. That we might know the joy of sin forgiven. And so perhaps each day we might pray simply, Lord have mercy. Or that very beautiful ancient prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And know the joy of God's healing, forgiving love. And each day when we reflect on that day, as it comes to its close, as we think about the ways in which we've seen Jesus and heard him in the encounters of that day, we might simply say again that beautiful and ancient prayer, Maranatha, 
come Lord Jesus. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. And finally, as we look to the joy of Christmas, our celebration of the Saviour's birth, we might pray the words of that beautiful hymn, O come to my heart, Lord Jesus, for there is room in my heart for thee. So may God richly bless you in your Advent journey. May it be a time, a season of hope, of joy, of waiting and of longing for the one for whom we look, Jesus Christ, whose coming is at hand, and to him be the glory. Amen. And I hope that that talk has inspired you as to those things that you will be reflecting on as we prepare for the birth of our Saviour. And so let's spend some time together now in prayer. Please join in the words of heavy time. Lord, we pray for our troubled world, for places where war or natural disaster have struck, and people find it so hard to have hope. We pray for those who watch and wait. We pray for our community, for the people we know and those we don't, for all in their sorrows and joys. We pray for those who watch and wait. We pray for those who wait for news, whether good or bad, that you will be with them. We pray for those who watch and wait. We pray that those around us will be aware of the true meaning of Christmas, that we might be as signs for them. We pray for those who seek that they will find. Although we are not worshipping together here this week, we are still supporting the life and work of the church through our giving, so this is our offertory prayer. God of great wonders, we join with you in the joy of this season of giving. You gave us a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. You give us life and breath. You fill the world with beauty our hands with bounty, and our hearts with the desire to give. Accept these gifts, and ourselves in service always, in every season. Amen. And now over to Steve, who's going to bring us this week's news, Steve. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you this morning, and uh, thank you, Joanne, so much for leading our service this morning. Uh, I just want to share a few notices with you. And first of all, it's about Walshaw and Lower Clough star festival this is something that the ch our church has initiated and over the last few weeks uh, we've been really encouraged by schools local businesses and individuals confirming that they're going to be joining in uh, with uh, this initiative covering our village our community Walshaw and Lower Croft with stars and it's something for us all to be able to join in with we can put stars in our front windows on our doors in our gardens we can come and put stars on our church railings and our first ones will be going up this weekend. You can come and put stars in the front of our grounds to remember someone you've loved and lost. Or you can come and put stars in the grounds to be thankful for a blessing in your life. The stars can be any shape, any colour, any size. They can be plain or they can have words in the middle or a picture even. And they can be made of any material. But if you need it laminating and uh, you need some help doing this, then just drop them off at the vicarage and we'll laminate them for you as well. And the idea is that we'll do this. And it's something for all our community to join in with. And also we'll be able to share our pictures online with our community as well of our stars uh, using the hashtag uh, Jesus is the star of Christmas. Uh, can I encourage you to join in with this? I've just got a few to show you. It's a bit like Blue Peter, I suppose, really. But uh, the idea is that we're going to put some stars on our railing, something like this, or in our grounds. Uh, this, this will go on a little stick in our, our grounds and there's some more for our railings here and for, our, uh, for in the grounds as well they'll be laminated in a little while here's one saying thank you NHS and uh, here's another one that somebody made that's going to be laminated and we'll be putting that on our railings as well they can be big they can be small as I say they can look there'll be all sorts of different kinds of stars and uh, please do join in with this. Uh, 
another Christmas initiative. Uh, it's a bit of a, an advanced notice, really, because there's nothing there at the moment yet. But it's looking like we're going to be unable to have our carol service and our Chris Dingle service this year. So we're initiating a nativity trail through the centre of Walshaw starting sometime next week. There's going to be eight points where participants can see and read parts of the Christmas story using words from the Bible. And they can even listen to a Christmas carol using a QR code on the mobile phone. Uh, I just encourage you to, to watch this space. I'll have more information about it next week, but you can also watch out on Facebook and Twitter as well. Uh, the idea is that this is, again, something that we can all join in with, uh, but at the same time, us all keeping safe in respect to the coronavirus as well. As, as you know, as Joanne shared with us already, we're now in Advent, and uh, between now and Christmas, through Advent, instead of having a book of the month, and instead of having a different Going Deeper video each week, we're going to be doing something quite different. We're going to be working through Advent by reading the Bible, praying, singing and reflecting on what God has got to say to us. And to help us to do this, we're going to use uh, a watching and waiting uh, 2020 Advent course from the London District of the Methodist Church. Um, and the course was designed to be used by groups or by individuals on. I think it's absolutely perfect for us to use. Each week there are readings, prayers, music, reflections in a small booklet which can be followed online. It can be downloaded if you want to or it can even be printed off. But I'd really encourage you to use it online because then you've got the advantage of being able to use the links to go to the music and join in with the singing or just listen to the music as well. Uh, details were in my email on Friday. They're also on the website on our Going Deeper Following Jesus Going Deeper page as well. And I think the details are on the screen there as well for you. Finally, um, I'm sure many of you will have been saddened to hear uh, of David Smith dying a week last Friday. He went to be with the Lord, which is good news. Uh, and it's David's funeral this coming Tuesday. I'm sure lots of you would like to be able to attend this funeral, but you'll also be aware that there are restrictions on the number of people that can attend funerals at the moment. It's probable that by the time you've uh, watched this service this morning, I've already been in touch with our church family and those who have wanted to come along uh, to, to David's service, now that we know how many people can attend, uh, you'll already know that you're able to attend. But I'm sure there'll be many of you that would have liked to have gone to David's funeral but won't be able to do. And uh, I hope that you found the prayers that I printed in uh, my email on Friday helpful and that you'll be able to say those prayers or join in with your own prayers on, on Tuesday lunchtime. Uh, we'll be in church at, on Tuesday at 12 o'clock and then we'll be at Radcliffe Cemetery at 1 o'clock as well. I hope that's helpful. I uh, ho hope all of those help for you and help to get you in the mood for looking forward to celebrating the birth of Jesus at Christmas. Let's uh, remember that this is a really exciting time. It is one of watching and waiting. But it's also a time when we can remind our community and remember together that Jesus is the star of Christmas. Thanks, everybody. God bless. Bye. Thank you, Steve. And we come now to our closing song, a call for Jesus to bring his light to the world. Make sure that you're singing along. We're going to sing Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness.
now our closing prayer. Everlasting God, help us this week to see the world through your eyes. Give us the patience and persistence to allow you to do those things that we cannot achieve by our own strength. Help us to know your presence so that we can share your love with others. Amen. And as we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>